Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Perrysville. It's a pleasure to have you here and joining us for this virtual worship service as we celebrate the great mystery of the Trinity. Trinity Sunday is when we recognize that God comes to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three, Amen. but yet one. One, but yet three. It is indeed a great uh, mystery that we have and that we celebrate. Also, I'd like to, to inform you that uh, we are continuing our broadcast um, of these services, and we'll do so even as we contemplate a gradual opening of uh, our services so that uh, more people can attend corporate worship. Church Council will meet tomorrow evening, and we'll determine uh, how we can do that in a way that is measured safe. Uh, this is the first Sunday in the month of June, and normally during this time, we recognize those who have graduated uh, from their studies. Um, and so we are going to lift up uh, those who unfortunately were not able to attend commencement services, but did successfully graduate, or will graduate in August. Uh, Carly Graham graduated from North Allegheny and will be attending the University of Pittsburgh. Zach Andrikovich graduated from North Allegheny and will be attending Penn State. And Megan Schilt graduated from North Hills High School and will be attending uh, Indiana University of Pennsylvania in the fall. Jeremiah Pulaski will graduate in August from Slippery Rock University. Tyler Rice graduates in August from the University of Pittsburgh with a degree in mechanical engineering. Uh, let me go back, Jeremiah graduates with a degree in safety management. Jason Earl graduating from the University of Pittsburgh with a degree in, in English, writing, and communications and a minor in theater arts. Trinity Spark. Uh, graduated from the University of Massachusetts of Amherst with a degree in art therapy. Those who successfully completed their master's or graduate studies uh, were uh, Abby Lee, who received her master's in education from Clarion College, and Shayla Rice received her master's from the University of Pittsburgh in speech therapy. So, with that in mind, uh, Fran Halley is going to not give a commencement speech, speech but also read a poem uh, by, written by Dr. Seuss, All the Places You'll Go. And as she told me right before the filming of the service, that uh, it was his last poem before he passed. Wherever you fly, you'll be best of the best. 
Wherever you go, you will talk all the rest, except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true that bang-ups and hang-ups can happen to you. You can get all hung up in a prickly perch, your gang will fly on, you'll be left in a lurch. You'll come down from the lurch with an unpleasant bump. The chances are then that you'll be in a slump. And when you're, when you're in a slump, you're not in for much fun. Unslumping yourself isn't easily done. You'll come to a place where the streets are not marked. Some windows are lighted, but mostly they're dark. A place you can sprain both your elbow and chin. Do you dare to stay out? Do you dare to go in? How much can you lose? How much can you win? And if you go in, should you turn left or right? Or right in three quarters, or maybe not quite? Or go around back and sneak in from behind? Simple it's not, I'm afraid you will find, for a mind maker upper to make up his mind. You can get so confused that you'll start to race down long wiggled roads at a great pace and grind on for miles across weirdish wild space, headed, I fear, for a most useless place, the waiting place, for people just waiting. Waiting for a train to go, or a bus to come, or a plane to go, or the mail to come, or the rain to go, or the phone to ring, or the snow to snow. Or waiting around for a yes or no, or waiting for their hair to grow. Everyone is just waiting. Waiting for the fish to bite, waiting for wind to fly a kite, or waiting around for Friday night, or waiting perhaps for their Uncle Jake, or a pot to boil, or a better break or a string of pearls, or a pair of pants, or a wig with curls, or another chance. Everyone is just waiting. No, that's not for you. Somehow you'll escape all that waiting and staying. You'll find the bright places where boom bands are playing. With banner flip flapping, once more you'll ride high, ready for anything under the sky, ready because you're that kind of a guy. Oh, the places will go. There is fun to be done. There are points to be scored. There are games to be won. And the magical things you can do with that ball will make you the winningest winner of all. Fame. You'll be famous as famous can be with the whole wide world watching you win on TV. Except when they don't. Because sometimes they won't. I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too. Games you can't win because you play against you. All alone, whether you like it or not, alone will be something you'll be quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance you'll meet things that scare you right out of your pants. There are some down the road between hither and yon that can scare you so much you won't want to go home. But on you will go though the weather be foul. On you will go though your enemies on you will go, though the hacking cracks howl. Onward up many a frightening creek, though your arms may be sore and your sneakers may leak. On and on you will hike, and I know you'll hike far, and face up to your problems, whatever they are. You'll get mixed up, of course, as you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. So be sure when you step, step with care and great tact. And remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft, and never mix up your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and 3 quarters percent guarantee. Kid, you'll move mountains. So be your name Boxbaum or Bixby or Bray, or Mordecai Alley than Alan O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. We begin our worship service. In the name of the Father, and of the 
of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, in all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for your love. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have had to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you, thought, word, and deed, by all we have done and by all we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here, their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship you in your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live endless in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At the beginning of time, God the Creator, God the Wonderful Word, and God the Life-Giving Spirit formed the earth and all its inhabitants. God sees that all this created work is good, and then rests on the seventh day. The first reading is from the first and second chapters of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome, from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let there be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, 
Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning on the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And every beast of the earth, and every bird of the air, and everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because of it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is in all the heavens, out of the mouth of the infants and children, you have set up a fortress against your enemies, the signs of hope and adventure. When I consider your work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Paul closes a challenging letter to the Corinthians with an appeal to Christian fellowship grounded in the triune harmony of Christ's grace, God's love, and the Spirit's partnership. The second reading is from the 13th chapter of 2 Corinthians. All rights. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel, according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Many years ago when I was in seminary, we were sent out sometimes as supply pastors to preach whenever a pastor was on vacation or whenever they were ill. And uh, this is a good way of us learning how to uh, uh, practice the uh, art of preaching. And the homiletics professor who taught us about preaching always had this kiss, K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, seminary. Now, you probably have heard, heard other versions of that kiss. Keep it simple, seminarian, though. It's always kind of stuck in my mind. And what he was trying to convey to us was this, that we were to have a sermon that should be about a single message. We were to keep things simple, not too complex, and not bounce from topic to topic to topic, as sometimes sermons do but rather to keep it simple and understandable. But how do you do that on Trinity Son? How do you do that when we share the God as one that comes to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? The Trinity is a tremendous mystery. We can't explain it. We can only try to celebrate God's presence as Father, Son, Holy Spirit, God who created us, God who reconciles us, and God who leads us. It is complex, but life is complex. Life is very complex. And we see that even in nature. In the 1700s, Carl Linnaeus came up with a system where he could catalog all different plant life and animal life. And so, you know, um, he would have different categories for plants and a different kingdom for animals. And within the animal kingdom, there were reptiles and there were amphibians and there were mammals. And then he would come up with something like a platypus. A platypus that has a bill like a duck. A platypus that has hair like a mammal. A platypus does not give birth to his young life, but hatches them with an egg. Don't fit into that category. So if life is that complex, and God created life, certainly we should have no problems believing that he is too complex for us even to realize how God comes to us one in three and three and one. But I will say this. I think this is an important message for this day. In the celebration of the Trinity, we don't necessarily celebrate the math, but it's all about the relationship. God is a perfect unity within himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he calls us to live in unity with him and also in unity with one another. And that definitely is the message that we need to hear today. To practice, as Paul says, the ministry of reconciliation and healing in the world. The Trinity is in perfect relationship, each person to the other. How can we improve our relationship? You know, all relationships take work. All relationships.
take commitment and forgiveness. And how can we be agents in this world of hurt and brokenness to help bind up the spirit of the world and also in our land? Jesus knew this quite well when he entered into our broken world. He knew about violence. He knew about fear and hatred and the worst that humanity had to offer. And yet, God was in him, coming down to this world to bring about healing and reconciliation. And then God also led the disciples to be agents of healing and reconciliation as well. That ministry has been given to us. It has been given to us by our Father who created us, by Jesus the Son who redeems us, and also by the Spirit of God who leads us. We are baptized in that name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we bear that image to the world. Let us be of good courage. Let us speak for truth and peace and healing among all people, within our families, within our friendships, within our community, within our congregation, within our country, and throughout the world. Amen. Amen.
as you respond to the petitions of the prayers of intercession, your response will be, your mercy is great. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, deacons, and all the baptized in sharing your life-giving good news with all the world. Strengthen us to be bold in our proclamation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. great. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Inspire us to see waterways, plant life, birds, fish, insects, and mammals, and call them good. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage the leaders of this and every land to seek peace, equality, and unity. Instill wisdom in advocates who work toward justice in often ignored communities. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of care, you created us in your image. Help us to see your likeness in one another. Open our eyes to see and attend to all who face oppression and suffering. Console, heal, nourish all in need. Especially we lift up Susan, who is hospitalized. We pray for Tom, Jordan, Liz, Andrew, Deborah, Tom, Cliff, Ariel, Don. We pray for our city as we move from the yellow face to the green face. Help us to maintain safety. Help us to be considerate of others. Give us, Lord, the spirit of patience. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy is great. God of companionship, you accompany this body of faith. As the rhythms of summer begin, protect all who travel. Renew all who will enjoy a time of Sabbath, and shelter all who will not be protected from the sun's heat. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy is great. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all time and in our lives. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy is great. In your hands, O merciful Savior, we commit all for we pray. Trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever.